Farnad. Good to see you after uh, all this time locked away. I can see why you've called your album home. And made in this tiny room, nearly all of it. Yeah. Wow. But except, yeah, I, I, I'd almost wave the computer around, but there isn't room, <laughs> except for the drums. You know, uh, Soren Mariassen and Ben Wiesner played some drums on a few songs, so I got them to do that. Yeah. So when you consider what we can now do uh, with technology uh, along these lines and recording an album as you have with this new album, Home, uh, is moving forward from 2022 into 2023 going to be very different in the recording process to what we had in 2019 in the past? I think that was already well underway before the pandemic, but the pandemic certainly enforced that sort of collaboration. And what it did for me on my record was it meant that rather than going to a big studio or getting a band, I just had to use the resources and people in the house. And at the time, the kids were still living at home. <laughs> They've moved out now, but they were here and my partner was here. So I just, so they do all the backing vocals and that became a thing. And so suddenly, in fact, the sound of these three female voices uh, singing on my record is is part of the sonic stamp of the record. Yeah, recruiting uh, the two daughters to uh, do some work in the studio. So uh, we had something called a toy orchestra in here. Do you want to explain what a toy orchestra is? <laughs> Okay, well, yeah, I, I wrote a song called Ray of Hope and uh, I wrote on, you know, the notebook, make it sound like a toy version of ELO. <laughs> and so um, and my daughter Morty plays uh, the violin and the viola. So I just tracked her up, you know, and really, uh, this is nerdy music stuff, Paul, but, you know, putting the mic so close that you can hear this sort of cat gut scraping on the strings, that sort of thing that really George Martin and Jeff Emmerich were the innovators of that, you know, way back with Eleanor Rigby, you know, that really close mic'd string sound. Love it. Yeah. But but I kept it kind of tiny, not a big section, just a real kind of <laughs> sort of thing. Yes, I do like the idea of a mini version of ELO. That's... <laughs> Yeah, not too much quite ELO. A, <laughs> quite, a good, quite a good description. Don't you love the way, you know, like there was a time where ELO were just so uncool. And now, of course, they're the coolest thing out. You know, everybody loves ELO. And so when you've come to make this album, I think you've referred to it as your most pop record ever. Um, is that, you know, how you see what you've done as, as uh, sort of moving to the pop genre? Well, I th well no, I actually think... I. I not sure where that quote came from. I actually think it's my most personal record. I didn't, it's not a like, oh, these are my feelings. Everybody has to endure my feelings. It was more a case of, I, 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 I have that Nina Simone quotation, which I can't remember now I'm mentioning it, where she, she just insisted that as artists, we've got to respond to the times we live in. And, you know, and that's our duty. And that's basically what I've been trying to do and go, well, I, I don't want to sort of just entertain folks, you know, I want, I need to respond to this uh, time, you know, we've got sort of crazy populism and we've got this uh, kind of splitting into tribes thing that seems to be happening in Western culture. And and uh, so there's enormous political imperatives and there's, and I just, I thought, how does music, how does pop music deal with that? You know, it's no good just sort of shouting at people and saying, you know, your, your attitudes are wrong. We've got to do something else. And it's something to do with making people feel something on a more elemental level. So I was committed to that as a project. And I think that's, there's that. And also the fact is you, I, it is true. I wanted to, I thought I'm bugger pop music. I'm going to make, this is going to be arty as all get out. And that's where the record started. But by the time, you know, as I made a few tracks and gradually it just became song crafting and, the, you know, pop, it did go pop in the end. <laughs> nothing wrong with pop, Paul. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, good to see Richard Pleasance uh, back working with you again. Oh, gosh, Richard. Well, Richard and I have, we have stuck our toes in the water a few times over the years. Like, um, he very kindly 
uh, contacted me, oh, it must have been 10 years ago, and said, oh, I've got, I've got to punch out a theme for have you been paying attention, come on up. So he and I made the theme for that TV show and it was just, it was blissful. It was so easy to work together without the pressure of oh, a band. We just sort of slipped right back into the routine. And we wrote some songs that for Boom Crash Opera, which the band hasn't done yet. And um, and then I've yeah, well, I said, I'm making this record and this particular song, it's called As the River Flows. It's one of those songs about trying to respond to where we are at the moment. It's in fact, it's very much that. And it just sounded like it, it was spacious and open and saying, this needs Richard Pleasant's atmospheres. And I thought I could have a go at that, but why not get him to do it? And it's great. He played cello. He's taken up the cello, Paul. <laughs> He's talking to VLO. <laughs> uh, so Rich, Richard on As the River Flows, he plays cello. He, he plays a couple of electric guitars. He played the bass and uh, he tracked them. He tracked it up. You know, all I gave him was me singing the song with a few electronics. And once again, the three women I live with um, singing spooky backing vocals. So it was pretty empty. And he kind of crafted it from there. Re yeah. He did a great job. I'm really, really grateful. So in the middle of saying all of that, you dropped in a, and he's written some uh, new Boom Crash Opera songs that haven't come out yet. So is there a new album? Oh, oh no, there play? isn't at the moment. Well, look, it's on and off again, and it has been for years. It's trying to get, it's the herding, herding cats scenario with Boom Crash Opera. But we did, we got on a bit of a roll there for a while, but it is a few, it was before COVID and we pumped out quite a few tunes. Um, and there, they just sat there still sitting there. <laughs> They're still sitting there and I'd like to get back to them. I just need to persuade everybody that it's worth doing. On the topic of, you know, Boom Crash Opera doing a show like Red Hot Summer, uh, one of the early ones that I saw, it must have been uh, the start of 2020, was it, with uh, uh, the Hunters and Collectors in Bendigo, where it was just, you know, bang, 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 hit after hit after hit. When When you're given like 30, 40 minutes to get on stage and you can fill it full of hits, it just sounds like this bona fide greatest hits record that comes out. Oh, we, well, we love that fact. And, and we even love the fact that when we don't play all the, all the hits, we actually, oh, we can't, there isn't enough time to play them all. Oh. Which one will we leave out? Oh. That's, that's the fun part. So, yeah, it's really great fun to smash them with an enormous hit play a whole stack of lesser hits and then come home with, yeah, it's really, yeah. That's why being in a sort of uh, legacy band is uh, a great thing to do. You know, I, I think I think there's a number of things going on here. Uh, someone like me, I have to keep making new work and that's why I've made the album I've made. And I'm also quite proud and happy to go out and play songs that are kind of out in the culture and everybody kind of owns them and 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 having that big communal moment at a festival playing a song like onion skin or dancing in the storm that sort of really shared thing is fantastic yeah. who wouldn't want to have that if you had the opportunity to do it yeah well we will actually get to see you perform some of these songs you know, going out with models soon uh well i've yeah i've just done the week i've just done a weekend with them in sydney and brisbane Fantastic fun, but yeah. I play by myself and I'm doing the corner hotel with them and uh, I'm hoping to do some more. Well, I am doing more support spots around the joint uh, and it sort of works for me. Like you'd think, oh, having a guy get up solo before a rock band is, you know, that's a bit scary. Playing a, playing a bunch of songs that you, you, people have never heard, but I um, thrive and it's really good fun. Yeah. Do you do any of the Boom Crash Opera when you do your solo set? Because, I mean, Onion Skin is 100% Peter Farnham, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you, you could legitimately no, well, get up and do that. It is your yeah. song. Well, okay. I uh, Is my name on the record? Yeah, it is that I wrote it. But I actually share that with everybody. I, oh. I, I just think that song, 
would not be what it is without everybody's contribution. So I just share the publishing on that. I, I think it's a group composition myself. Mm. Ha happy to take the kudos and then, you know, pretend this false modesty thing I'm doing now is really good fun. <laughs> <laughs> But well, honestly, get, that guitar part is that's Richard. Richard Pleasant's came up with that, not me. Yeah, and that's okay. you know, and that drum part, which you know, Peter Maslin. I just said to Peter Maslin, uh, "Toms, tribal toms, Maz," and you know, he just went the full Gene Kruber, and there you go. So you've been involved with a few uh, movies over the years. You've mentioned the television show. Is there any more movie work or soundtrack work coming up? Uh... I wish there was, <laughs> but there isn't at the moment. Richard seems to have that sewn up. Um, I what, what? Yeah. Well, I did a I did an art house movie a few years ago. It was really good fun, but it never got a general release. It's on telly every now and then, and it was called The Boy Castaways. All oh, right, and right, right. That, it, I think it had Tim Rogers was involved in that. Megan Washington. Yeah, so, so Tim and, and Meg and Paul Capsis. Mm -hmm. and in fact, after doing that movie, that gave me the idea of doing the last record I made, Pesky Bones Volume 1, mm -hmm. where I just had other people sing the songs. And I just, because it worked on the movie and it was good fun and I'd formed some relationships. And uh, so I just, you know, but that movie was, that was an enormous project. It took a year out of my life. Wow. And there was a concert at the Mel at the Forum, um, it, and and because it was an indie film, I was doing like four people's jobs, you know. So I, I remember the guy who mixed the movie said, "You realise that there'd be four people doing what you've had to do over the last six months." So, uh, uh, but I, you know, and I did a little bit of work with Sarah Watt on. Um, that's funny because that was uh, yeah, my year without sex was the movie. Mm -hmm. And she wanted a, a community choir to sing "Hands Up in the Air," so <laughs> I, I wrote I wrote out a chart, I wrote a vocal arrangement for it, and uh, I did a little cameo in the movie too. I mean, in the community choir. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to go and dig these out. That sounds like a <laughs> rainy Sunday afternoon something to investigate. In movie. <laughs> well, the the hilarious thing about it was. The, the 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 community choir actually sang it and they shot that that what they shot is the choir singing the song and i budgeted and you know i put a budget in and uh said okay so once they've done that we'll then go into a studio and track it up properly you know and fix it up and she sent me the rough cut of the movie i don't want to be rude about the choir but it wasn't you know it was recorded just as a guide and it's just a community choir and it's a bit rough and 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 in the context of the story it absolutely made sense mm. because it was a comic movie you know it's a comedy drama it was a, it was comic that moment mm. and i just said look i don't think we should redo it i think it should sit there sounding daggy and community and sweet and humble and not make turn it into some big production <laughs> and so that's what's in the movie, what they sang on the morning that we shot it. Yeah, well, good to uh, talk to you and uh, home the new album, a couple of gigs, and then back to boom crash work in 2023. Yeah, I'll be I'll be flogging this record home for the next few months, so I'm going to be out doing more gigs in the new year. Yep. Yeah. All right. Good to see you, Pete. See you, Paul.